Juan, does your district go all the way to the Mexican border? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I, I want to run some numbers by you that appeared on the Internet this morning, and I don't know what to believe on the Internet. I have tried to find the actual number of migrants who've entered into the country without permission for the last many years. I know it's 8 million in the last three years under Joe Biden, but this individual said in 2010 it was 463,000. In 2011, it was 340,000. They do it by year right up to 2020, 405,000. And then it spikes to 1,956,000, then 2,766,000, then 3,201,000. Does that sound correct to you? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Does that sound correct to you? I mean, I, I think it does. I don't have the numbers in front of me. What, what I can tell you is that in the last three years, we've seen that, that spike go way, way up. I mean, that's what we see. What, what the charts that I've seen, and I wish I had this in front of me, there, there was a chart that Border Patrol showed us once when we were at the Yuma sector. And you could see the, the lower uh, spike. You see the numbers drop right after Remain in Mexico came in and also uh, combined with Title 42. The drop in numbers at that point was dramatic. Uh, that was around the, uh, late 18, early 19. And then as soon as, uh, of course, Biden came in and changed the policy, the numbers spiked right up again. So there's a direct correlation specifically in the Remain in Mexico uh, policy that, that, that we've seen, not to mention, obviously, everything else that uh, Mallorcas and Biden have done or not done uh, on the border. One of the things that they have done is basically, with their actions, invite people in. That message continues to get across the entire world now, not just uh, uh, Central or South America anymore. South of the border is a message that the entire world is hearing that the border is wide open, and, and we're seeing the results of that. Now, Congressman, people in New York, people in Massachusetts, people in Chicago are very upset about the migrants that are coming to their cities. What is the effect in your congressional district of what is basically unlimited access to the United States? Well, the impacts that they're seeing are a little different than the ones we're seeing. They're, they're getting the many people's final destination. Uh, nevertheless, the numbers that these communities are getting are spread out within all these communities. So they're talking about maybe a, you know, a couple thousand a month or so or, or even a week sometimes. We're seeing those numbers on a daily basis many times. And, and when those numbers get to a certain level, you start seeing street releases that at, at some point they seize for a couple of days. And now in the last couple of days, we've seen them spike again. When you see uh, Texas taking the measures they're taking, obviously that traffic has to be moved somewhere else and, and it and ends up coming to, uh, to some of the ports in Arizona, especially on the eastern side of the, of, the, uh, of the state where my district is. So we're seeing the daily impact of this, and that's why the bill that we passed yesterday uh, that, that, I, that I introduced is important because we're seeing that traffic come in into Arizona in higher numbers. The Tucson sector right now, Hugh, is the busiest sector in the entire country. And, and you know, a lot of people don't know that. They assume that th- this is happening more in Texas, but the numbers in the Tucson sector are higher than anywhere else in the country right now. Now, Congress, Congressman, tell me the honest to goodness truth, because I don't want to be wrong about this. Would the wall, the 900-mile wall that is tall and strong and well-patrolled, would that help reduce, I know it won't eliminate, would it help reduce illegal immigration? 100%. Absolutely. It would. That's one of the first things that that, uh, Biden stopped. And you can see the results of that, that executive order on day one of stopping the, the construction of the wall. I've seen where it stopped. Obviously, we see the gaps, and many of those gaps are you know, because of the terrain, they're, they're hard to build on there. Other gaps happen because the construction stopped. There, there are different reasons for these gaps, but there are areas where the wall just stopped that it could have continued. And what the, what the barrier and what the, walls, what the wall can do is deter people into one specific direction that helps uh, with fewer uh, men and women. There's a video right there that you're seeing. Exactly. See where that stops right there? Uh, I mean, obviously, the terrain has something to do with it there. Uh, nevertheless, there are areas where it just stops in clean, uh, clean terrain. That's so in that San Diego happens, County. Is- Bill Malugan put that up yesterday, and I've played it. It's over on the Salem News Channel if people want to watch it. So, Congressman, will you vote for any immigration bill that comes from the Senate that does not have a wall in it? There are a lot of spec- there's a lot of speculation on that Senate bill, and I think it's missing quite a bit. There are some things that we hear about it that is troubling. Uh, you know, we got to see some text on that. It does have to include the wall. I mean, that that's a simple one. That has bipartisan support as well, or at least it should. And, and speaking of that, you know, when I talk about this bipartisanship or or bipartisan uh, view on this, when I'm at home 
it's completely bipartisan. I have Democrat mayors, county supervisors, uh, elected officials that want this as much as we do. The partisanship happens here in Washington. However, we did see some optimism yesterday when my bill passed with 56 Democrat votes. Not a lot is passed in the House right now, especially in border security and especially on bipartisan basis. So there is some hope here that that both sides can see the urgency of this and, and putting up a, a wall and protecting our country. Uh, I, it shouldn't be uh, that controversial. What, what does your bill do, Congressman? So my bill is called the Raul Gonzalez Officer Safety Act. Essentially what it does, it tackles uh, um, smuggling activity and high-speed chases that my district is seeing almost on a daily basis within 100 miles of the border. What we saw with Raul Gonzalez, a Border Patrol officer, involved in the high-speed chase, and he was killed in action. Uh, we also saw a woman in my district, Wanda, who was on her way to her 65th birthday party and was struck and killed by a high-speed chase uh, right close to the border. There, her ne she never obviously made it to her celebration. Her family uh, had to go back and find her uh, and, and found the accident and, and all the police there. You, we see cases like this, both that law enforcement are getting hurt or killed and also uh, citizens that are innocent bystanders. So my bill increases the penalties heavily on people that are involved in these high-speed chases, whether they're here illegally or U.S. citizens as well, because as you know, a lot of these smugglers, many of them, most of them actually, are U.S. citizens. So we increase- Well, that, that's a common sense bill. Point. It's like the wall. And I do not know why we're involved in crazy stuff about shutting down the border after 5,000 people come across in a day. And I am curious, yeah. has anyone from the Senate called you a member who's got a lot of popularity, who's very, very important in Arizona and a border district. Has any member of the Senate called you for your input? I've, I've been in meetings uh, where one example is uh, Senator Sinema gather a group of members. Uh, I was one of them that we met with her. This is early, uh, maybe a few weeks ago that, that this happened. And then we've also heard from uh, Senator Langford at one of the larger meeting, the Republican study group here, uh, that we had him as a guest speaker. I haven't had one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. And again, the, the main message back to them is saying, okay, I, I get what you're trying to do here, but we need to see the language. And, and until then, it's all speculation or it's all promise or it's all uh, assumptions. Yeah. We don't know. Let me, down, let me so put a, an underline under this. Will any bill pass that does not have the wall in the House or the Senate, in your view? I don't see it passing in the, in the House if it doesn't have some protection on the wall. Uh, I, I would have a lot of trouble supporting something like that. And then you mentioned also the, the, the cap of 5,000. I mean, that, that's a wrong message to send. That's basically saying up to 5,000. <laughs> that's 150,000 a month. I mean, come on. That, that, we we got to get started. Oh, it's the no, dumbest no. thing I've seen. This whole process, and I like Jim a lot. He's a friend. I think Senator Lankford's a smart guy. So is Senator Tillis. But not starting with the wall on all 900 miles. Then they could have put whatever they want in there. But then they didn't do that. JuanSiscomani.com for the congressman's website. We will keep sending people there. Keep working, congressman. You are our conduit to common sense in Arizona. Uh, and, and I thank think Juan Siscomani. Thank you.